The Challenge of the Yukon. I'm king! I'm you, Malamute! The Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes a trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the Challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of a small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. Spring had come to the Yukon, and with it the thaw and magic of the Chinook woods transforming the snowbound North Country to a green wilderness of unsurpassed beauty. Through this wilderness, a group of travelers made their way on horseback. In the lead was the guide, a brawny Frenchman, well-versed in the ways of the land through which he traveled. Beside him rode a young, nondescript-looking man, obviously a Chichaco, as was the attractive girl and the elderly man riding close behind. The man riding beside the guide looked about with interest. How much more time do we spend traveling? Well, from what I understand from Monsieur Thompson's directions, a good five days. You grow impatient, huh? Uh, five days, huh? Well, that's a long pull. Uh, they will be as nothing. Poof, like that, they will be gone, believe me. Myself, I find these days very enjoyable. Uh, if you're uh, thinking of Judy Thompson, you're wasting your time, Bouchard. Uh, She's spoiled and as hard as nails. Well, one can but try, Monsieur. I... Ha-ha! <laughs> Someone on the trail ahead of us. What does you say, Bouchard? I say someone on the trail ahead of us, monsieur. And it is... Are we? It is a mounty. A mounty, eh? Huh? Hi there, mounty. Oh. Here. Here. It is Sergeant Preston. Well, what's he doing up here? On patrol duty, most likely. It is well to be pleasant to these mounties. Myself, I have always found the so. Oh, well, 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 Bouchard, how are you? It's been a long time since we've met. Good, yes, my sergeant. But as you can plainly see, I am now honorably employed as a guide. Yeah. No more rum smuggling to the Indians. Oh, hmm? man makes mistake, Maui. But I present my employer, Monsieur Jean, Monsieur Thompson, Sergeant Preston. I'm glad to know you, sir. Thompson. Well, that name's familiar, not Chester Thompson. Why, well, yes. <laughs> I never expected to meet the famous American mining engineer in our country. I'm happy to know you, Mr. Thompson. <laughs> Joe, Sergeant. For the moment, I was doing some quick thinking about my past, wondering why my name should mean anything to a Canadian policeman. <laughs> oh, uh, forgive me, sir. My daughter, Judith. How do you do, Miss Thompson? How do you do? And uh, my assistant, uh, Mr. Jackson. How do you do, sir? Well, since we seem to be traveling in the same direction, why don't you take potluck with us tonight and bunk beside our campfire? That's an excellent idea, and I'd enjoy it very much. All right, boy. I'm king. I'm you, mother. That evening, as the group prepared to make camp, Sergeant Preston talked to Chester Thompson and Judith while Gustav Bouchard and Charles Jackson left to gather firewood. Here, yeah, let me help you with that saddle, Miss Thompson. So I'm on the trail of one of the richest ore discoveries ever made, Sergeant. And believe me, I'm looking forward with the keenest anticipation to seeing it with my own eyes. Come on, Bouchard, we'll go gather firewood. Ah, oui, uh... That multi may stay with us for the rest of the trip. True, he may, mon ami. And if he does for myself, I want no part of the scheme. What do you mean, you don't want any part of it? With the Mountie, one never knows. He's here today, in the morning he may be off somewhere else. Well, that makes no difference. You'll be well paid. Well paid, yes. But what good is money to me if I should be where I cannot spend it, eh? No, a merciful providence has been with me. I do not intend yeah. to tempt... Well, providence may not be so merciful to you if you back out now, get me? Uh. Tonight you'll do as I tell you. A bullet will stop a Molly's heart the same as will any other man. We can't afford to take any chances. With him out of the way, we'll get the map from Thompson. But the sergeant... You'll tell me nothing. You'll do as I say. That night, as they sat about the campfire... Well, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Are you trying to tell me, Sergeant, that you've pit the intelligence of your dog against Galahad? Not at all, Miss Thompson. I don't doubt for a moment the intelligence of your stallion. I've trained that horse in the time of the yearling. 
The cuts he's won would line a room. But I was going to add that it's loyalty as well as training and intelligence that are the qualities of a priceless animal. And that loyalty is something which can be tested only in a trial by fire. What are you talking about, Sergeant? I'm saying there's a difference between training and loyalty. Oh, what an impossible statement. The two are synonymous. I'll wager any sum of money against the loyalty and training of Galahad as opposed to the intelligence of your dog. <laughs> I'm not a gambling man, Miss Thompson. Well, I'm for turning in. Good night, everyone. Good night, Good night, Good night, Good night Sergeant. Sergeant. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you met your match there, Judith. My match? Oh, you saw him back down, didn't you? He talks a big game, Father, but he knows I'm right. That night, as Sergeant Preston slept, King was on the ground beside him, a round, motionless ball of fur. And then suddenly, the great Malamute sensed, rather than saw, that the man on the other side of the campfire was awake and moving stealthily. I can get but this gun. Quick, quiet! King, King! What's wrong, fella? Who's oh, right? A thousand pardons, my Sergeant. But you see, I thought I saw one of those mountainous cats. At the edge of the timber. Your gun, she was closer than mine. What, what happened? But well, we're waking. Uh, we did, we must have uh, frightened her. I no longer see those fierce eyes. But by God, I do not feel any comfort unless I stand on watch the rest of this night. With my gun, I shall stand watch. It won't be necessary, Bouchard. I'll watch you go back to sleep. Timber in this country is full of links, so I'll keep my gun handy. <laughs> the next morning, before hitting the trail, Sergeant Preston spoke for a few minutes to Chester Thompson. I'll be turning off about two miles up the trail, Mr. Thompson. There's a village of Indians I must look in on, but I'll join you before sundown. What was that, Sergeant? Are you sure you'll be able to keep that schedule without a horse? Yes, I'm sure I shall, Miss Thompson. <laughs> Incidentally, Mr. Thompson, uh, how'd you happen to hire Bouchard? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, Jackson hired him. Why? You better keep your eye on him. Been arrested a couple of times for smuggling. May or may not mean anything, but don't take any chances. Don't worry, I won't. I'll see you later, then. <laughs> later on the trail, Charles Jackson looked toward the French guide. Deliberately, he nodded, and almost instantly, both he and Bouchard drew their revolver. All right, halt those horses. What? A gun! Jackson, have you gone mad? What's the meaning of this? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, you too, Bouchard. What is this? Uh, you'll find out in a minute. Dismount. Uh, you'll regret this, both of you. Though you seem to be running the party. You bet I am. From here on, Thompson. Now hand over the map. Oh, so that's it, huh? Yeah, I'll hand it over. Come on, quit stalling. It may interest you to know that from some premonition, I destroyed the map this morning. The only copy of it exists in my brain. Why, you dirty oh, little... Here, you sneaking upstart. You're a brave man so long as you're holding a gun, Mr. Jackson. You'd be smart to keep your mouth shut, my friend. Your friend? Why, you brazen, toad-faced scoundrel. Sure, please. There's nothing I can do but cooperate with him. But you! Judith, get out of here quickly! Out! Get away from me, you old fool! Get up, Run, boy! Run! He is wounded. You worthless double-crosser. Why didn't you fire on her? Stand there and let her get away? Oh, my me. I could not shoot a beautiful woman. Never. Oh, you couldn't, huh? Well, I can shoot you, and I will. There'll be more on this for me alone. No, 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 please, monsieur, I beg of the you. The old man and me are in this together. I'll drag him with me every inch of the way with a gun next to his head just to keep his memory clear. I don't need you anymore. You didn't get pressing and you didn't get the girl. Please, please, I will help you. Help. No. You murderer. You cold-blooded murderer. That's right, Grandpa. And the same thing will be waiting for you unless you pay my way. Judith Thompson urged Galahad to his greatest speed, flying hoofs thundering seconds away into a seeming eternity for the frightened girl. She gave the stallion his head, praying he would keep to the trail they had traveled earlier. And then as the ribbon of trail skirted the timber, the horse stopped, sensing a danger that was not apparent to his rider. Instantly, she was thrown to the ground. Sergeant 
Preston covered the trail at an easy pace. There was freedom and strength, an unconscious grace in a Malamute's rhythmic stride as he ran from the trail through the timber. And as he ran, he realized that he was not the only one in the stretch of timber. For in the distance, he caught the wild cry of a lynx, hungry, searching for food. Helpless on the trail, Judith Thompson also heard the cry of the lynx. And at the same moment that the dog and the treacherous cat caught the scent of human flesh, she knew in a blinding flash that certain death walked toward her. Rushed at the edge of the birch forest, potted beneath the weight of the paws of the lynx. A thousand danger signals flashed in King's mind, for he had recognized the scent of the girl. He knew that if he were to save her, his task would be to delay the attack of the lynx by diverting his attention. He would risk death himself. When Sergeant Preston approached, he found the lynx poised to jump, and King, every muscle steeled, ready to dodge. With an agility more than matching the cunning of the giant cat, the Malamute thrust and parried. His sense of timing saving him by inches from the claws bent on tearing life from his body. King! King, old boy! King! Saved her life. Well, uh, that's one lynx who won't look for food again. Miss Thompson. Oh, Sergeant! Galahad ran away, but the lynx frightened him. Ah, never mind. Now you'll be all right. Unless we stop it, there's no time to waste. He's a murderer, I tell you. Uh, at Chicago, we'll leave a trail that's mighty easy to follow. We'll put you on the travel and start immediately. It was late that night when Sergeant Preston advanced on the poorly concealed camp. Charles Jackson had made. We'll start early tomorrow, Thompson. From what I remember of Bouchard's talk, we're on the right track. You better make sure you keep the directions in mind that you gave them. You'll never get away with this, Jackson. No? <laughs> well, I'll shoot the first man that tries to stop me, just like I shot Bouchard. You won't have a chance to shoot another man, Jackson. Reach! What? Sergeant Preston! So, Judith found you. Oh, no, I didn't find him, Father. King found me. My child, I'm so thankful you're safe. Sergeant... He murdered Bouchard in cold blood. You're under arrest, Jackson. <laughs> Judith, my dear, what's happened? You... It's nothing, what? really. Galahad was badly frightened on the trail, and he threw me. <laughs> You'll have to treat me like an invalid for a while, I'm afraid. Uh, it's nothing to worry about, Mr. Thompson. She had a bad fall, but she'll be all right. What? Well, so the prodigal returned. <laughs> well, never mind, boy. I forgive you. You never tried by fire before, were you? You mean Galahad left you? Why, what happened? A lynx, father. Galahad was pretty badly frightened. But you should have seen this plucky dog. I never saw anything like it. You were right, Sergeant Preston. There is a difference between loyalty and training. Galahad's always been a show horse. I, I trained him to win cups. And now that we're together again, I, I guess we both know the meaning of loyalty. Loyalty is something that can't be learned, Miss Thompson. It's given. Now, his coming back means that he wants to give yes, it. Yes, I see what you mean. Galahad. <laughs> Yes, fella. Thanks to you, the case is closed. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcription studios.